tell a pastor story real quick. I was listening to some teaching by Pastor Greg, Greg Locke, and he was talking about how we should behave, especially at the end of the day, and uh, how that we should not let the sun go down on our wrath, reading out of Ephesians. And he said, now, he's just being honest about him and his wife. He said, I'm a cuddler. I, it makes me feel comforted if I can roll over and cuddle with my wife as I get ready to go to sleep. And he said, I look over there one night, and she's got one of those body pillows that goes from foot to the neck. And he said, I can't cuddle with you. He said, well, it's comfortable, honey. You're going to have to learn how to make do without it. So he got kind of kind of perturbed at her, and he took one of the pictures that he had when she was praying up on, uh, she was standing there praying with her hands raised, and he took that picture from the platform, took it to a store, and had that picture put on a body pillow, <laughs> and he got it in bed, and he said, see, you can't stop me from cuddling with you. I love you. Oh, boy, I've always been a cuddler. Uh, I was a cuddler when I was a little boy, and my mom and my dad and I, we sleep in the same bed because we didn't have money for two beds in a hotel room or a motel room. We just slept in the same bed, and I'd roll over, I'd hug. My dad wasn't much for that, but my mom was okay with it. And so we got married, and I said, I like to cuddle at night. It makes me feel at ease. And so uh, I started gaining weight. As I Married life worked really well for this right here. I was talking about it. I ballooned up to about 250, 260. And uh, it sounds like a, a lot, but I'm about 215 to 220 right now. And so add another... 30 to 40 pounds on me, and this starts roly poly. And uh, so she said, I can't breathe. I can't, your weight's too much on me. I'm going to get you one of those body pillows. <laughs> and so I and Pastor Greg Locke both have something in common where that body pillow became our cuddling partner uh, in the middle of the night. Sister Kim, why don't you start us off with these videos?
Something that I want us to think about and pray about, and, uh, you know, maybe maybe you stub your toe and uh, ten dollars falls into your hand, and you go, well, I might as well give that for a Bible. Somebody needs to read about stubbing their toes in the Bible uh, because that would be good for them, whatever it might be. I think this is something that we should look at uh, as a wonderful work. Of Christ. Uh, do we have the next slide up? I can't even remember what's there, Sister Kim. Okay, well, stop it there. Let's go back to the Bibles. Uh, I want to talk a bit before we sing, because I want us to get together and pray, and then we're going to praise the Lord afterward. Uh, I want to challenge Center Hill. Um, I don't know, maybe you've heard of it, maybe you've not heard of this, but I want to challenge us. And I want to begin by going back and reading a simple text uh, that we are all are familiar with, but we're going to read it, and then I'm going to bring about my point, and then we're going to read it again, okay? Uh, I just want to read verse uh, 10 and 11 in Malachi chapter 3. Malachi, the last book of the Old Testament, at least in our order, although it is not the final uh, book. Uh, chronologically, if you remember our uh, order that we studied a few weeks back on a Wednesday night in our Bible basis. As you get there, I want to announce and let you know, and you'll see the slide here a little bit later, that this Wednesday night, we're going to look at the Bible basics of angels. Two weeks. Not this Wednesday, the following Wednesday will be demons. And we will find the basics so that we can understand what they do, and how they do it, where they have done it. And then we're going to look at foods in the Bible in the uh, next to last Wednesday of uh, this month and then the final Wednesday of November will be the colors of the Bible and again what they represent and how God used them for his kingdom okay if you have found your place in Malachi chapter 3 verses 10 and 11 it says this Bring ye all the tithes into the storehouse, that there may be meat in my house, and prove me now herewith, saith the Lord of hosts, 
if I will not open you the windows of heaven and pour you out a blessing that there shall not be room enough to receive it. I don't know about you, I like that kind of blessing. To not have room to receive the blessing if we will but trust in God. And he says in verse 11, and I will rebuke the devourer for your sakes, and he shall not destroy the fruits of your ground, neither shall your vine cast her fruit before the time in the field, saith the Lord of hosts. So what God is saying is that if we will honor him by bringing in our tithes and our offerings, that regardless of what the carnal circumstances are in this world, he will take care of us. That's what we're promised. But I want to go beyond the personal, because I most, especially most Baptists, understand tithing. They've been taught it their entire lives. Uh, there are a lot of independent churches that uh, aren't that well taught on tithing and giving offerings, but Baptists particularly are. But today, I want to talk about something that you may not have thought of. You may not have contemplated Get ready. Church tithing. Um, since this is an independent church and missionary Baptist churches are not a denomination, there is no requirement to give to the central church. In other words, the offices of that church. You go to a denomination and you will find that a church is required present 10% of everything that comes into the church to help support the central government of that denomination to uh, prepare preachers for being a pastor or an evangelist. Whatever it might be, they become that central part and each of the churches puts in tithe well, just because a church is not in an organization or in a uh, denomination that receives monies to a central office, it does not mean that the church should not tithe. As a matter of fact, uh, as you read, and you can hop online and use church tithing, you will see that um, there is something that happened here at Center Hill, 1922. If we know that we've been here, this church, not the building, but the entity of Center Hill, Missionary Baptist Church has been here 101 years right now. 101 years. This is how it happened. Laredo gifted 50 people to start this church. That meant that immediately Laredo Missionary Baptist Church had half of their people gone. Half of what was coming in the offering plates was gone and became part of Center Hill Missionary Baptist Church. Why? Because they wanted an outreach. They wanted to get closer to people in this area because back in 1922 they were still driving some wagons. Uh, you could have definitely had some cars, but out in the country, they weren't that rugged. They weren't that good. So um, on those deep ruts, the wagon still worked great. But they wanted to start a work to plant a church. Most churches that plant churches today start by sending people. They say, well, here's that are living in that area, so here's the people we're going to gift the new church plant, and then they commit 10% of what still comes in to support that church for X number of years, at least two years. So they get the people, plus they continue to get 10% of what is coming in at the mother church. And you're saying, why are you saying all of this? We're not ready to plant the church. No, we're not. The point is, is that 
when will we be able to plant a church? Uh, that's going to happen when we have grown. But what we need is, is we need the spiritual and the financial blessing. So we need numbers and we need, we need spiritual growth and numbers growth in this church to be able to plant a church in the future. That's the first missionary work that a church truly can do itself, is to plant. But that does not happen by accident. We're not just going to wake up one morning and say, well, let's plant a church. We've got to be prepared for it. Does anybody, do you believe, and I'm going to ask you what you tithe, I'm going to say, do you believe that God has blessed you by your tithes and offerings that you've given into the church? Yeah, Bob? Same thing? Okay. I believe he does. I, that's what the Bible tells me, and in my personal experience, by what I give, offering or tithe, I've been blessed in my life. Uh, I can't outgive God. I give, I give more and he gives me more than I have given. He blesses me. Okay. So, if that is true for us, the individual, then also for the church. So, what I'm, what I'm saying tonight is this, and I would love us to be prayerfully considering that we step out in faith, that Center Hill step out in faith, and decide to give 10% of what comes in on a monthly basis to missions. And let that be our tithe and let it be for missions of local. That would mean local JMBA. That would mean it would go to missions globally through the uh, BMA of America. Um, that we would be able to help Stone Ridge, whoever, whatever it might be, whatever God opens up, Bibles in Zambia or whatever other outreach there might be. And that we would commit to do it for one year and see, as Malachi chapter 3, verses 10 tells us, see if you will not open the windows of heaven and pour us out a blessing that we will not even be able to receive. And I would like the church as a whole to begin to pray on this. This is something that um, churches all over the country have done that are independent, that um, do not have an organization above them because, again, a denomination, that's already going to be part of it. Do you know um, I pay my tithe. Do you know the, the Assemblies of God requires their pastor to give 20% tithe? 10% to, the, to their church and then 10% to the denomination. My uncle had a heart attack. He had a heart attack when he found out it's going to be 20%. One fifth of everything came out of that check. Um, I try to stay ahead of 10%. I had a friend that always said he never wanted to do just 10%. He wanted to do more, and they immediately began to do 20%. And they found God's blessing more and more. But what I'm asking the church to do is to pray that the Lord will direct us and see if this is something that we would do let God prove himself to us. Yeah. Yeah. I was talking to Victoria uh, before church because I know at my age um, after uh, growing in the Lord through trial and tribulation and weapons if I walked into a church um, at my age uh, for what I know in the Lord I would my first question is, uh, what is the church doing? What is the church's vision? Uh, there is a church here locally in Jonesboro that had a millionaire that walked into their church and gave 18000 flat out, or more, 
I know this for a fact, it's in the association. And the pastor went directly and bought the land that was behind their church, took the money directly because the church had been praying to get that land. Now, people love to plant. As the Viet, none of us are millionaires in San Jose, but doors need to be open here. And at my age, for what I have, I would never want to go to a church that doesn't have a vision. I would wa always want to go someplace where God is able to move through the congregation through the Amen. vision of vision of uh, mission and outreach. That's Amen. what I'm saying. Amen. Uh, there is, uh, you say, well, what's that vision? Without a vision, my people perish. Uh, so this is something that I want you to be in prayer about. And read. Read the Bible. See what it says. See what God would have us to do. Uh, and see the blessings of it. Listen to this. I will rebuke the devourer for your sakes, and he shall not destroy the fruits of your ground, neither shall your want your vine cast her fruit before the time in the field, saith the Lord of hosts. And all nations shall call you blessed, for you shall be a delightsome land, saith the Lord of hosts. Um, I believe that if we want this church to grow, I believe we have to have a, a vision. We've been talking about this for the last six or so months. Uh, and so I want everybody to be praying about this. I really do. I want us to seek God and see if, I mean, because here's what's the worst case scenario? That we put 12 months of, let's just say that our average uh, tithe and offerings was $2,500. $250 a month for 12 months, $3,000. Let's pretend that in that 12 months we got absolutely nothing else in and we were down $3,000 at the end of that 12 months. What harm have we done except lost $3,000, but we didn't lose it. We gave this. And we gave it to the kingdom of God to work and to do things. Stone Bridge, uh, Bible Camp, uh, the two missionary works that are here in Jonesboro, Discovery and Nueva Esperanza, New Hope. Um, there are, in addition, seven other uh, missionary churches that have been planted here in Arkansas by the state commission. And we can be a part of that, and we can be a part of many other uh, missionary outreaches. So if you would, please be in prayer because God has called us to uh, do things, and I want to read one other verse, Proverbs 3 9. Proverbs 3 9. If you would like to turn with me again, this is not up here on our screen. 3 and 9. This is last minute from, from the Lord to me. And here God just talks again. Uh, he begins by saying that the, um, if we acknowledge him, he shall direct your paths in verse 6, chapter 3, verse 6 in Proverbs. Be not wise in thy own eyes. Fear the Lord and depart from evil. It shall be health to thy navel and marrow to thy bones. And then in verse 9, 3, 9 in Proverbs, honor the Lord with thy substance and with the first fruits of all thine Increase, so shall thy barns be filled with plenty, and thy presses shall burst out with new wine. Praise God. So that's what we would be praying for, is that God will burst out here for Central Hill. That as she uh, gives, uh, at this point we have been giving between about 50 to $100 a month. So the increase that I'm talking about is only going to be from that to 10%. But 
if the board agrees that the people win, which is what we're praying for, and they tie, or they give offerings, and all of a sudden, instead of it being $2,500 or $3,000 in a month that comes in, all of a sudden it's $4,000 or $5,000, we get to increase what we're tithing because God has blessed and we want to continue to bless. I believe God is faithful. And if you've not heard about church tithing, you ought to look it up. It's there. This is not a radical idea. This isn't me. This has been done in churches all over uh, the world. And a lot of Baptist churches use this very same model. This is something that's very typical. Um, but if we ever want to grow to the point to where we can plant to work, then at some point we've got to have faith to reach out and do that. So tonight what I want us to do is to pray corporately. We'll lay that aside uh, with regards to our continued prayer. And what we have got upcoming is our church business meeting. Uh, and I would like us to be praying before that assemblage. But I want to remind us of one thing. that Giving to God is not really business. It's thanksgiving. It's not business per se. But we will take it up at the business meeting and see how many are um, have prayed. Maybe you felt something from the Lord and you would, you would like to see it. Or you're, you've got a concern and you'd like to find out uh, how we could deal with these issues. Let's go to the Lord in prayer during these next two weeks. Third Sunday is our uh, bi-monthly business meeting, uh, just following the five o'clock service. Um, but tonight, what I would like us to do before we praise the Lord is to uh, is for us to pray corporately. And tonight, not just not just for the needs, but brought before the Lord, but I want us to pray for us, the church. I want us to pray for ourselves. And I don't want this to be about me praying over the microphone or one person leading. I want this to be a our time to pray. We really just had a prayer meeting for the next 20 minutes. And after that, we'll do a few songs. We've got our song of the month. And uh, maybe you will feel something during the prayer time. Uh, maybe God will open something up to you that you've been asking for. Uh, this is our time to pray. If you would like to come up, you sure can. Uh, kneel down here at the altar. We've even got some nice soft pillows. We've got the front row if you just want to sit, and you can stay exactly where you are. But let's go to the Lord in prayer for the next 20 minutes.
about what the Lord is doing because it gives hope for the future of the church. It gives hope for people. You get somebody coming in, and I've had them ask me this before. I've had people in other states ask me, well, what is the church doing? Well, we're having services. <laughs> I tell them what the services are. But this is different. This is God moving through the church, yeah. God's heart. Jesus yeah. said to give. So if we're going to do it, we have to be so excited of what God is doing yeah. because Stand on the Hill, to even exist and even do anything for the Lord is through outreach. And that's why, like, the church, uh, the church of God, uh, the pastors, they pay 20%, and then the church, church pays yeah. uh, so much money into the organization, and the churches are required to do that for those covenants. But we're so blessed. We can do so much with Free so will. little. When I was over in Casey Springs, uh, Pastor, I laid in bed and I said, Lord, I just need $10. I don't need no money. Where's we buy a makeup? And you know, a couple days later, we got a check for $10 from, who pronounced it? Paraguay. I thought, $10 from Paraguay? That's 100 over there. What we have here in America, bless our little deepest of hearts. Americans, even ones that don't have a lot, are nothing compared to where that $10 check came from. You know, and so for us to be able to plant in these nations that are third world and have God be able to reach and we don't even know what God's going to do, and I know that God will bless us. And I believe in my heart that when Steve steps out about this, that there'll be other brothers in the BMA that are just going to be shocked. Well, hey, <laughs> because we have big churches in the BMA and they're already asking for missions, but this is something different. This is a small church reaching out in love and we're doing the gospel that Jesus said. Uh, uh, let, let me say this as she mentioned that. Uh, sometimes we need to be a testimony like we individually need to testify. And that's a great testimony as we give um, because it's humble. Um, but if we want to see God move on our behalf, uh, it's not just going to be, as Margaret said, it's not just going to be how much, how interested people are in the services. But what is the church doing? What are the ministries of the church? So that is something we want to keep in our hearts and minds. Let's go to the Lord in prayer.
will and receive your seal through. If the church can't, I will. Please. I will do it. The best way it goes. Because I know one thing. I want to see this church blessed by people like you. And if it takes me, I'll do it. That's not a guilt trip. That's just I want to see it done because I want to see God's power poured out in this place. I want to see people drawn to Center Hill, not because of my powerful preaching, not because of us being nice people, but being active in the work of Christ locally, statewide, nationwide, and worldwide, that we've got something beyond just Crowley Ridge, but that God wants us to be active in his work. If we are unable to, as a body, to come into prayerful agreement, I will do it. I'll pray for you. So that's the uh, end of the sermon this morning. Thank you, Jesus. Um, I thank God. Uh, that's what the Lord spoke to me as I was praying. Uh, well, really, we can, we can, if you would like to, I know there are a few needs, let's uh, gather real quickly and let's join hands over all of the needs and then we will sing a few songs and be dismissed. Thank you, Jesus. Uh, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Uh, also, if you did not get a chance to have communion this morning, uh, here at the end of the service, I'd like those that did not get communion this morning, I'd like us to have that opportunity together uh, so you can stay uh, uh, for that just a, just a few minutes at the end of the service. We'll have Sorry. communion as well. Okay, so what we would do is we would take each of those things, like right now we're trying to help uh, the Stone Ridge Baptist camp. We're all uh, that that we're all using your $50. Yeah, we can we can can we can we can okay, so that 10% would be divvied up to the different the different you know, three ways or what? Well, but, but how many are the ways? In other words, we've got uh, state missions, national missions. Is, is that the most? And so therefore, it would probably go, uh, I would like to see at least Stone Ridge keep their 50 then there's uh, the Jonesboro Missionary. I mean, right now, we're not giving anything to National uh, at all. We've not given anything to National. And we've not given anything besides that $50 to give twice to missions, which we need in uh, Nueva Esperanza and uh, Discovery, and then everything else to anyone else. Okay. So you can tell us what's planning. That, that's the
will not open you the windows of heaven and pour you out a blessing that there shall not be room enough for you to receive it. That is, that is true for each of us as a believer. That is true for the church as well. Again, like I said, if, it, if it's not enough, look, in a year, we're not going to go belly up. We've got enough money in the bank in a year if we went belly up and we didn't get anything and we didn't grow a whit, the worst we're down is just that amount. And I wouldn't sell my diamonds. And I would always say, whether we should or should not do that, we can't be jealous. Sit in the church, I mean, I would have probably it, but I just wondered, you know, they had plans for how that would be. Yeah, we would be so we would be looking at national, uh, which supports global missions, 80 countries. We've got missionaries in the world uh, that are uh, that DNA supports. Then we have states, and uh, we have local, and we have uh, the Sony Baptist camp. Of course, the state also has Springfield. They've got a state-run uh, Bible camp as well uh, that would help with the state. They just had a, they just had an upset with one of their seven plants. Uh, they had given it to a man who was going to be the pastor. He had been there for three years, and he said, "I'm done." And he handed it over to a guy who was a novice. He's never even pastored a church. He's hardly even preached in his life. And he handed the church over to him, and they said. Director and the president of missions for the state said, I know I'm the bad guy because I said, Look, I can't support his decision because he just handed it over to somebody who's got no background in missionary work. He's not a preacher, he's not a pastor. I told him, I, You've got great people there. I said, Okay, you did what was right, you made the right call. I said, It's a tough call. And like I said, if it's not possible and it hurts, I'll take the burden as well. Well, these things are always difficult to navigate. That part, I don't think the 
can't do it. I just can't do it. In other words, if three thousand dollars comes in, I will give three hundred dollars in distance. If I have to do that, we can bring it to you. Yeah, what about the house? Three hundred. That would be the size. Well, we're already here. What? Uh, about hundred. So we're talking about two two hundred and five fifty hundred. Yeah. So that's the, see that comes though for me. You're talking about a lifetime of trusting in God to provide because I've seen it all my entire life, and so for me it's vital. And I do know this: just like you, if you want to be blessed, you tie and give on your offering, and you've been blessed. God's blessed your life. That's the way He does. He always has, and I believe He does the same thing for a church. A church. Uh, that is stingy because of people. Usually it's not because their heart is not there. They're stingy because of people. Well, they have authority to make money. They do. Church, burn, church doesn't burn down. They have plenty of money. Go back to the time of the God gave me a house in Philly and I built this and I built this and I built this. I never knew that. You want to give me a house? I had a new home, uh, and that's why I want to get somebody to check and give me the new one, get me repaired. They offered to help me. Hey, on Tuesday, it wasn't a dozen people on Tuesday, but on a day or two to sit on. And I said, I believe what you want to do. I said, I'm taking what the next church is going to burn down out too long, and there wasn't enough to buy still stuff for me. And I believe God is real, and I believe if we're generous as blessings, and I believe if we're stingy. Uh, I'm not saying the church will burn down. Okay. Uh, am I that old fashioned? You better believe I'm that old fashioned. But uh, God deals with us. You say, well, that just doesn't seem realistic. Trust me. Uh, that happened to my mom's trailer, and she wasn't. It wasn't even about giving. It was about being haughty. My dad bought a used trailer of Avion. It had pink and gray striping up at the top. She said, Charles, I want to buy some pink and gray shag carpet. Well, she did. She got it. She got what she wanted. And then she said, I don't want anybody wearing shoes in this trailer. I don't, because I don't want that carpet dirty. A 24 foot trailer that's eight feet wide, it's got a hallway about three and a half feet wide. There's no room to walk. And there's no room to get your shoes off except outside. And then she went one step further for all of the family. I want those socks off because I don't want them on my carpet. So we did. I did. My uncle, who hated it, did. My dad, who hated it, did. And then the Holman thing took a mind to back up and flooded the entire trailer and all of that beautiful carpet was gone, had to be pulled out. And then the problem was is all the padding had stunk all the way to the bottom. And so it was all gone. And she said, okay, I'm going with the shortest carpet I can get. And there's no restrictions now on shoes and the socks. I don't care. God taught me my lesson about pride. So, does God deal with people? Yes, he does. He deals with churches. Uh, that just happened this last year. A church decided to preach that it was okay to be homosexual and be a Christian. They started teaching the LGBTQ. Lightning struck the bell tower, and it burned to the ground. Nothing. Scary. Um, we have a church and they preach this and that and the other. Let's preach. Let's just go on fire and let the flames burn down. Yeah. God is getting right at home with the pastor. You, you preach this or something. But see, people don't want to believe that God actually does it. God do, actually does. No doubt about it. But anyway. Uh, have the air conditioner fixed, 
need to, nec to take necessarily take up any extra offerings, right? No. We're just doing the, the tithe. The there won't be any missionary offerings. Why? Because we're churches tithing. We think it's been going to the, the local missions. Yeah, In other words, missions. Nueva Esperanza. Right. And That's the one that we did every time we had to register it. Yes. The church this week. Yes. Well, that will be included in this In letter. that it's already getting in there. So that's yeah. cutting out. And well, we have been collecting uh, some of both of the churches that have all put in. Believe it or not, we have raised a 1,100 total with those churches. Yeah. Ele we, um, not us. Not but us. All but of those we've churches. We've put in hundreds, but with all those churches yeah. together, we've raised 1,100. There's, there are more on that group list than we have people raised to twenty-five to thirty times. For uh, Israel. For Israel. Yes. And then the last time, this last offering. So all we're talking about is we're just talking about instead of worrying about taking up the offerings, we're talking about the church has automatically got that that tithe and you just and trust God. Remind everybody yeah. that as they're giving, yeah. I love God with all of my heart. Yes. I love God with all of my heart and He blessed me.
go to the church. Yeah. We would have just taken the time. some sense it would be easier to start with zero. Uh, but God uh, has a way to do things and all I know is what I've seen work. And Thank you. 